Good morning and welcome. We're delighted that you're with us. If you're joining us online, the bulletin is available at www.nativityonthehill.org. We'll begin this morning with a piece that Dylan has written for us as a prelude.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless be the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, this is in Spanish. Let me say the Spanish and you can say uh, with me if you'd like or listen to me and then try it. Santo, Santo Dios, Santo Poderoso, Santo Inmortal, Ten Piedad de Nosotros. Okay, and the melody goes like this. Santo, Santo Dios, Santo Poremos Rosso, sorry, Santo Immortal, Ten Piedad, Ten Piedad, no, no de nosotros. I'll play on the piano and go with it. Just try to go with the Spanish and enjoy yourselves. We are now in Mexico City. Santo, Santo. disciples were all together in one place and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, this crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these people speaking? Are they Galileans? And how is that that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. 
But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 104, and we will read responsibly at the asterisk. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Your darkness is great and wide seas. And in its living things too many to number. Creatures both small and great. There moves the ship. And there is that welcome. Which you have made for the story of the All of them look to you to give them their food in this season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hands and they are filled with good things. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they die. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God by my God. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. No. no. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Okay. Okay. There's a bookmark there. <laughs> <laughs> a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another, the utterance of knowledge, according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of the healing by the one spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, the discernment of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. 
All these are activated, activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one, and his many members, and all the members of the body through many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. renewal, bringing new life, 
is what God's work is. It struck me as I read these passages that these disciples who had just lost Jesus must have felt themselves completely at a loss, really in chaos. They couldn't go back to the world they knew before Jesus. They had resisted the Roman Empire. They had stood with him, standing up against oppression, and now he was gone. What was the way forward for them? As I prayed this passage, I thought about all of our transitions, these moments in our life when we find ourselves in chaos. We can't go back, and the way forward is not clear. My son graduated from college last weekend, a joyous occasion. But it's a moment of transition when I suspect he finds himself in a bit of chaos. No longer a student and not at all sure of what comes next. I think about us as we face transitions in our lives, on the brink of giving up a house that we've lived in to move somewhere new. Perhaps in a health crisis, where we know that through rehabilitation or through medication and treatment, some new life will come. But we're never going back to the way we were before this illness. Aging as we give up some aspects of our active work life and transition into something different for the next phase. And we don't know quite how we're going to get there. It can feel sometimes like because of external pressures, we don't have a lot of choices. But this is when God enters in, in the form of the Spirit, to renew, <coughs> to guide, to bring us into that next phase when God's wholeness, when God's creation is possible in a new and different way. So I listen to these passages today for clues about how God does this. How does God work in that moment when we can't see clearly? And I think we have some clear pointers, at least three of them. In the Gospel, Jesus appears to the disciples. He comes as a vision, as a dream, as a presence. It's hard to say what this passage really means. We know he had died. And so it wasn't his body, but something came into that circle of people and they knew that it was Jesus. And he spoke to them clearly, peace I bring to you, peace. I think about those moments when in the midst of daily life, the busyness, the sort of chaos, internal chaos, when we might just pause, take a deep breath, and feel God's peace right there with us, a presence, a presence that we might recognize as Jesus in our midst. Maybe it's in the middle of the grocery store, Maybe it comes in meditation. Maybe it's a vision that appears in that space between waking and sleeping, or a dream that we just vaguely remember when we wake up. But this gospel passage encourages us to be vigilant and open, listening, feeling, looking for those signs. Christ is in our mind. In the second way that I, I see the Spirit appearing, I hear this passage from Acts, and it's so surprising. The Spirit comes in foreign languages. Hmm. For some of us who've studied foreign languages for many, many years, it seems so unlikely that suddenly 
all at once you would both speak and be understood, that you would be able to hear a foreign language and know exactly what they were saying. If you've ever studied, at least for me, years and years of study, it didn't come that way. But I think this passage, instead of suggesting we're suddenly going to speak in foreign languages, suggests that we should be open to listening to the foreigner, to the other, to the one who we might not have expected to know anything about us, to have any guidance for our lives. How can they? They're from some other place. And yet, perhaps those are the voices that bring the spirit. I was thinking of the members of our community who've had caregivers from Fiji, Eva and Sala, these wonderful, wonderful women who live here in Marin and have a whole circle of caregivers. They speak their own language, and yet their wisdom and healing comes into our lives in powerful, wonderful ways. Maybe it's the person that we didn't recognize who's here, an alien, the person from Ukraine, the person from South America, the person from Afghanistan. The, in Acts, they list all those countries, all those voices, Egypt, Pamphylia, Phrygia, the Medes, the Parthians, the Elamites, Parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, Cretans and Arabs. Who are those foreign voices who might have wisdom and gifts for us? Maybe in hearing them, reaching out to them, listening, we might know something new emerging in our individual lives and in our community, bringing us from a place of chaos into a new way of being. Finally, I hear in the letter of Paul to the Corinthians that the Spirit comes not to empower us to be independent and self-sufficient, but the power of the Spirit comes to bring gifts to each person so that collectively the body of Christ might be the renewing force that Jesus hopes, that God wants for all of us. This is a hard lesson, and I'm talking to Yates about this right now. He thinks that he should know what the next step is. He thinks he should be able to figure it out, and that maybe, you know, it'll come to him all at once. But that's not the way the Spirit works. The Spirit works in the form of job counselors, friends who have connections, other people who found jobs recently or long ago, those people who will help and support, who will encourage and show paths that otherwise are not available. Thinking again about those moments when we know something has to change, is it the neighbor who has the gift of hospitality? Is it the old friend who has the prophetic word telling us it isn't the way you see it? Something new is possible. Listening to the gifts of so many others and recognizing that we have what we need, not because God has made us perfect, because God has connected us to one another so that we can be more together than anyone can be alone. The last thing I notice about the Spirit in these passages is that the Spirit calls people not only to be new people, renewed in God's way, but to do God's work. We hear Whatever you forgive, the sins you forgive will be forgiven. The sins you retain will be retained. This is a message that it is on us to continue God's work. 
Jesus sends the Spirit so that we together would continue that work of bringing freedom and wholeness, healing and love into the world. That Spirit is for us when we are lost and it empowers us to help find the way with everyone we love, those close and those in the circles that extend from this place out into the world. Today, after our worship, we'll gather together at the memorial wall and in our prayers we'll remember those who died in the service to our country. In both of these moments of remembrance, we should hear that the Spirit has moved to build this community over generations. We are not the first. We will not be the last. The gifts of the Spirit came to those before and helped bring fullness to this community here, bring freedom to the world, live according to the image that God gives us of that heavenly place where all things are present. Amen. Amen. Please rise as we say together the baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, mighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered and punished his father was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Okay, um, a brief tutorial on how to do this. The words are going to be the Native American words which are the, the, the in normal print, not the italics below. So it's not the Latin, it's, it's the, it's the um, Native American from the Muscogee Creek Native Americans. Um, and so the, 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 I'm going to sing it once, and you can join along with me, and then we'll all sing it together once, and then we'll talk about how to actually sing it as a round. Okay, I'm going to sing it once, so hear me do it. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Wonderful. So go ahead. Now, what happens is, is, is the, the one, oh, oh, that's great. I love that. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so while we're being sprinkled, 
the first side, which is here with you, Jean, on back to Kathy, and then this side with Diana on back to everyone there, uh, we'll, we'll do starting in measure two. You will sing measure one. You're coming in a measure later. And I will cue you. And you know what? The chaos is going to sound like a bunch of voices in different tongues coming down from heaven. I don't know why that works, but it kind of does. So make a joyful noise unto the Lord, and let's start Gene's side and enjoy the baptism. Here we go. Water. Okay, here we go. Hallelujah. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We thank you for all the gratitude for our children and grandchildren. We will exalt you, O God our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died especially remembering Deidre, Harry Jackson, and Winnie Coleman, those who have died in the war in Ukraine, and those who have died in service to our country, and those who have died as a result of God, 
gun violence, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We also pray for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so hold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. We pray the collect for heroic service. O judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 The peace of God be always with you. And also with you. a few announcements. Um, we'll pause briefly after the service and gather at the memorial wall to do a very brief service of remembrance and blessing of the new plaques on the wall. So please join us for that. There's a separate bulletin in the back. It's just a few moments but a chance to remember those who've come before us and honor those who've placed plaques on the wall. Um, tea. We're selling raffle tickets. I think almost all the tea tickets have been sold. If you didn't get one, um, see Susan. Yeah, I'm sure there, we can find another one. There's always space for another chair, but um, we're close. Katie also has tickets available, so maybe Ruthie has a couple. We'll find a way to get everyone in, but it's going to be really fun. The plans are coming together. That's next Saturday at 2. On Friday, June 9th, we're going to be having a contemplative um, workshop, a workshop on contemplative practices with Father Brendan. Listening for the Spirit, giving yourself a little bit of quiet, a time to hear how God is working in your life. Consider this as an opportunity to try out that practice. If you've never meditated before or never prayed in silence, this is a chance to spend a day opening yourself up to that part of our tradition. Graduation Sunday on the 11th, grandchildren, neighbors, children graduating from kindergarten, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, graduate programs, getting a certificate in firefighting. We, we celebrate all graduations, really. Um, at these transitional moments, we come together to give thanks for your accomplishments and to recognize how those accomplishments lead us into more gifts, more service in the world. So we'll honor all of our graduates with gifts to charities of their cho choice. Parish Directory, C. Ruthie. I think that's it. Anything I'm forgetting? Okay. 
walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering to God.
silent. You call the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This, is my cup. this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made. We acclaim you, O Christ, dying to destroy our death, rising to restore our life, Christ Jesus is coming glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. We welcome the offering. All things come of you, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat>
body finds the bread of heaven. The body finds the bread of heaven. Body. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Holy, 
loves us as a mother. <coughs> Go in peace to follow the good road and may God's blessing be with you always. Amen. Amen.